Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Michael K Q&A here on YesNetwork.com. I'm here with the aforementioned Michael K. How are you, Michael? Great, Joe. How are you? I'm great today. And speaking of great, the Yankees are playing great right now. Uh, big weekend sweep of the Red Sox, four-game series, uh, playing just uh, absolutely great baseball right now. What's going on with the Yankees? I think everything's coming together at the same time. Uh, the starting pitching has been outstanding. I think the bullpen is the reason that this team has made this run. Once they inserted Phil Hughes out there and uh, Sebe started to get a larger role, uh, Mariano rounded into shape after the shoulder surgery, and the starters know that they don't have to go eight innings. They could go six, they could go five and two-thirds, and there's enough out there to keep throwing zeros up. And, and the offense we all knew was going to be very, very good. Uh, I just think they're starting to believe in themselves. And another thing, Joe, that people sometimes are, are just overlooking, this has now become a home field advantage. Oh my God, the yeah. Yankees really like playing here. Uh, they know how the ballpark plays. And over the last week or so, I really think that the ballpark has found its voice. It's been very, very loud here, uh, almost getting to the level of across the street. And right. uh, I think as they move into September and, and hopefully for them into October, I think that's going to play a huge role. Now, speaking of the offense, it just seems like even when the Yankees are, are losing games now, they're in every game. I mean, uh, one-run games, they're always coming back. They're just a resilient bunch. Well, I haven't seen this until uh, since uh, the championship years, especially in 98. Uh, those teams came to the ballpark, and they never thought they were going to lose. Right. And then they were trailing. They never thought they wouldn't come back. And I think that this team feels that way as well. Sometimes I think it plays against them because they sit back and go, well, it's going to happen. So the occasional games that they lose, I think that they, they put their pedal to the metal a little bit too late. Right. I think that's what happened on Monday against the Blue Jays. But uh, all in all, a, a team that believes that it can win has probably defeated you know, the, first, uh, the first demon that it has to defeat. And you talked about the starting pitching, and they have been unbelievable through this stretch run. But... Jabba Chamberlain, it's really a concern right now with Yankee fans. You know, looking at YesNetwork.com and the message boards, uh, one concern is the Jabba rules. Uh, are the Yankees going to have to break the Jabba rules to keep him in the rotation? What, what's their plan? Do you know anything? Well, you know, now, now we find out that he's not going to start over the weekend, that they'll have Chad Godin start. Uh, then he might start maybe in Oakland. I think that what they're going to do is that by moving him a couple of days back each time, they'll probably save him two or three starts. Right. You know, I had Brian Cashman on my radio show. 1050 ESPN Radio, 2 to 7, Monday through Friday. you got to get the plug in. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, I said, well, what's going to happen when Java comes out of the rotation? He said, he's not. He said, we have a plan in place that we will get him up to the inning limit that we have for him, and he's going to be in the rotation the whole way. So I think they'll skip him every now and then. I think they'll push him back every now and then. Uh, but their plan is not to take him out of the rotation. I think that they will stay firm to the rules, maybe – bend it by 10 innings, right. something like that. But uh, I don't see him, according to them, coming out of the rotation. Uh, now, the other night, Alfredo Aceves, he did go four innings. Uh, do you think that the Yankees are kind of stretching him out just in case they might need him in the rotation? You know, Joe, I've talked about that. I, I think that that might be the case. But I, I think he's so important to the bullpen. And, and I think that one of the reasons that they lost those three games in Anaheim was that they started him in Minnesota, and they didn't have him coming out of the bullpen. So unless you have a real solid backup that would fit in for what Savis is doing, and I'm sure that they would want Bruni to do that. I don't know if you could mess with it. Now, I also don't believe, and I'm not a big uh, a proponent of this, having him pitch four innings. Yeah. I think he's so important out there. By pitching him four innings on Monday in relief of Mitre, you lost him for the remainder of the series. I don't understand why they do that. This guy can pitch well in the eighth inning. He's so valuable, and I know he can give them length. But uh, I don't want him being Sergio Mitre's caddy. I don't think that that serves him well. If you're going to do that, then you might as well start him. Right, exactly. And one more question. Uh, Mark Teixeira has just had an unbelievable season, MVP numbers. Uh, you really didn't know how good Mark Teixeira was on both sides of the ball until he. you see him every day. I mean, he's unbelievable defensively. He's unbelievable offensively. What do you like about Marta Shara? You know, what not to, what, what, what don't you like? And I thought that Johnny Damon said it well, almost uh, repeating what you said the other day. He said, you don't realize how good this guy is unless you see him play every day. And I actually told Mark to share that about a month ago. Uh, I walked up to him. I said, wow, I never knew you were this, this good of a player. And he said, thanks a lot. He goes, that, that means a lot. Not, not, not that it came from me, but I right. think that you get an appreciation of how good he is by make, seeing him play every day. He works hard. 
He runs out everything. He's got an emotion and, a, and an energy level I think that this team needed. Uh, obviously at first base, I think he's turned everybody into a better infielder on the left side of the infield because they're not afraid to make throws. And uh, his ability to uh, start a 3-6-1 or a 3-6-3 double play or get the force at home plate, that's something that the Yankees haven't had for the last seven years. And not a knock on Jason Giambi. That one, not a good part of his game. He wasn't right. a good defender. He could scoop the ball as well as anybody, but he wasn't able to really throw it. Uh, I, I think Teixeira, to me, and, and this might be hyperbole, Joe, I don't know if you agree, I think the Red Sox not getting Teixeira is the reason the Yankees are in first place, and I think it will be a move that will haunt the Red Sox for the next eight years. That's why they went out and got Victor Martinez in answer to the fact they didn't get Teixeira. So for them to be outbid for Teixeira and let the Yankees swoop in and get him, I think that's going to be one of the black marks on Theo Epstein's regime in, in Boston. And, Michael, thank you, as always, for all of your insights. And thanks for coming on YesNetwork.com. I know you've got your ESPN show. You've got the announcement. What's the ESPN show on again? It's uh, 2 to 7 every day. Uh, what I, channel is that? Oh, it's ESPN 1050. Yeah, that's it. I know it. I know it. I listen Anything to it. Anything for you, Joe. <laughs> thank you, Michael. As always, keep coming back to YesNetwork.com for all of your Yankees' needs this season. For Michael Kay, I'm Joe Oriema saying we'll see you next time on YesNetwork.com.